Hello. This is going to be a reply to Wise Monkey. Hello, Wise Monkey. I don't know your Christian name or surname or real name or anything. Maybe nobody does. Um, I'm oh less than a second into your video, and I've kind of this is just to say I've um, I'm going to do a video reply. Don't know how it's going to turn out um, because I feel, feel I owe you a, a video reply. Um, because I empathise with you, whether you want to be empathised with or not. Um, I feel your pain. Uh, zero, yeah, less than a second in, but there was a fraction of a second where you, you started the video, normal cheeks, and then you started your sucking your cheeks in. And literally, it's happened within... Uh, it's it's um, I could say that's a, this part of the video reply and we're not even a second in yet that you've gone doing your face your sucking a lemon face I just <laughs> do as many of those as you like it doesn't bother me but I imagine it would bother people that don't like you um, so I'll listen to it's 17 minutes so if it is really to me um, I'll continue with this video with a stop and start sort of thing um, see how we go, as they say. Right. Oh, this is this is me on my ears. I'll listen to it on my ears, so Mrs. Mystic doesn't have to listen to everybody. Um, a description of me saying how wonderful I am at uh, doing my economics things, which is always nice to listen to. One well, never minds that. Um, then a description of what I used to do uh, before that, which was lots of talk mainly about free will, but he didn't mention the free will, but said as what um, intellectuals would call from the amateur side and I don't mind that at all I'm well happy with that I don't like you oh let me just get the thumbs up in the dark area I don't like using it I, I've, I've got the books on philosophy not as many as real philosopher people that take it seriously I could use the long words um, and their sort of descriptions but have chosen indeed not to um, so yes oh, from the amateur side Definitely, I definitely agree with that description. Uh, we're not even... Oh yes, we're, we're under two minutes, but... Compliments still flying in, which is... <laughs> I know how life goes, it's all, always a precursor to um, uh, set you up to knock you down. I, which I don't think he'll do to a greater extent. Not directly, anyway. Um, but an interesting point that we should be more careful about what we expose ourselves to on the internet but obviously that runs um, through everything in life if you start joining uh, a Nazi white racist skinhead club um, the chances are uh, further down the road you'll do um, socially unacceptable things um, okay I'll, I'll, I'll let that run because it looks as though um, you might, I'm talking to you aren't you WM um, I'm going to call you Frank it looks what Frank's saying is um, about philosophy anyway you might be getting the wrong idea. I was just reading somebody else's comment out last night on the Gary video. It wasn't mine, but that doesn't matter. I'm only halfway through that. Um, and you might tidy it up. And it doesn't matter. It's totally inconsequential anyway. But we've got the word philosophy, and you're saying what the word philosophy means. And um, I've never looked it up. I've never been told by a professor what it is. Um... And it's interesting that we talk about philosophy and what it might be. Actually, I, I did hear on my... Uh, I was listening to a podcast of a philosopher talking about what philosophy was. It was a lecturer at the London School of Economics. He said it was the study of... I forget. But it's interesting that even to get to a word and like philosophy... Is it important if, if I say I'm doing philosophy when I'm really not? I'm not saying that's what you're saying, but would, would it matter anyway? I don't know. I'll let you run on. 
but it's just words. They're very interesting. More just to keep my camera going than anything else. Um, I'm to the part where you're saying that Gary's anti-natalist ideas, well, I'll paraphrase and I don't care if it's wrong, are dated and you're going to explain new theories that are going to supersede them in some way and I'm looking forward to that and I'm not doing this because I'm bored I'm just very hot <laughs> it's a very hot day very hot day um, you'd melt from up in your northern Erie um, it, I think it said 34 on the temperature gauge And one more sentence in. Gary is not taking into account the evolutionary progress within... Ah, was that within society? I think it was. I'll just run it back a little and listen. Here you go. The idea of an evolutionary progress within humanity. That's good. I can talk about that. I, there's, there's some things I just don't talk about. I can talk about that. So I'll let you go on and I'll be able to reply to you about that. Progress. I see none. Yeah. <laughs> Fountain of Youth by Genetic Engineering for humans or potentially obviously anybody or anything. Dolly the dog. That's, I'll, I'll let you run and see if you can make sense of it, but so what? Um, do I talk this as Gary's idea or mine? I know what Gary would say. It's a horror show anyway, so why do you want to live for 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 years in horror show for? I don't do the horror show thing. I just go to the futility of it all. So why do I want to do something futile for 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 years? What, the, what on earth would I want to do that for? But I'll let you go. Now we're going off into space. Um, uh, from my point of view, what on earth for? It's not getting anywhere. Just because it's going further away, it's not going anywhere, it's not progress. It's, it's what some scientists have called progress, if you can send people to Mars, which they can't do now, they'd say that that's progress. I wouldn't, because it's not doing anything, it's not achieving any purpose. And it's not that I'm setting the bar high for... Uh, my definition of achieving purpose with this humanity thing, life thing. I'm, I'm setting the bar, at an, I'm saying it's impossible. I'm saying it is utterly and totally impossible to do anything constructive with uh, this whole life thing. It is impossible. I've, uh, as far as I can say, okay, you know, uh, there could be somebody out there that can come up with something, but my life experience so far you know when somebody has not got anywhere near explaining something to you and you go well and then other people have said things that through the time the time the time goes and to, to the extent you go no nah, no nah, it's just it's not going to happen because nobody's got anywhere near it nobody has got anywhere near explaining to me how this life is anything but totally and utterly futile if you, me, or 25 generations on, start living to be 500 years old and go into Mars and back uh, in the morning, or Alpha Centauri, or Planet Zog. So what? That's the thing. So what? It's just a, it's a complete waste of time. I hate this waste of time because it's a really trapping phrase. And it's, it's me that it traps. What's the point? What is the point? What's the point of going to the planet Zog? 
what's the point of taking getting to the planet Zog in two and a half seconds and coming back two and a half seconds later? I mean, there's no point to it all. It's pointless. Life is pointless. <laughs> and of course we can invent our little points. We can, we're doing it all the time. I often explain this. I mean, I'm really exploring this camera now. I've had the instructions out again. I've been carefully through them. And I was um, doing video shots up a tape measure to get my focusing right to see where it prefers to focus so I can make some nice nature photographs, um, videos, or vo video myself better. Or We do all these little things because it temporarily makes us feel better, but it is pointless, as in, in an ultimate thing. It's, it's got a point for me that it gives me a little ego boost. It gives me a little bit of pleasure. But when what I think is philosophy, which is looking at things in a, a big, big way, is philosophy, you know, in a big way. And, and, and in a big way, whether I can um, focus the camera or not on um, the hummingbird hawk moth on the la lavender, it's pointless. It's useless. Absolutely useless. And you can say, you know, you get these knock-on things that people go, mm, they kind of get stuck on that and go, yeah, maybe it is, maybe it is. Um, but then you can teach somebody else to be able to um, photograph brilliantly hummingbird hawk moths on lavender and think that that's a point, which obviously it isn't. That is pointless as well. But anyway, I'm taking up too much time. You've summed it up with the, with the expression, life is not necessarily a hopeless endeavour. It depends which way you look at it. I think, looking at it in the philosophical way, I'm going to repeat, the big way, it obviously is, because it is all pointless. Whether, even if we all live in um, geodesic domes, uh, loving each other all day long, that is still pointless. Now, I, I accept, I just got to repeat myself, I got, but from a personal point of view, life doesn't have to be pointless. I don't have to sit there here in misery, just going, oh, another YouTube wanker on the YouTubes. That's, ugh. I can go out and photograph hummingbird hawk moths on the lavender. But from, that's a personal point of view. It's not hopeless. But from a big philosophical point of view, I think it obviously is. And then I suppose you, you, you'd say then, but the end, then you take all the individuals and they're all doing something hopeful and they're all kind of happily, hopefully doing this sort of stuff. And then that makes the big picture. And I've got to say no, because we're just fucking about. We're, we're just pretending. I'm only doing the thing for the camera to fill time in to give me a little ego boost in time because it'll give me a bit more of an ego boost than sitting here watching cats play pianos on YouTube or whatever it might be you know an example of something else or, or doing nothing um, or having another shower I mean what it just because you get lots of something it doesn't make it into a big thing when those lots of little things are pointless in their own little way. Well, I'll let you go again. Hmm. You might have to explain this bit to me. I'll give it, I'll give it a shot. Socrates and Aristotle. Leave Plato out, eh? You jumped him. I, we're doing things, presumes thou, in a way that was egoless, they were really coldly scientific. But a lot of modern day academia is ego boosting. All I'll say for the moment is, whether it's Socrates or Aristotle, or Professor Anton and to be serious and their pretend academia stuff it doesn't really matter because it's all pointless philosophically oh I get you now 
Okay, it's on Gary. Ah, uh, Gary. And you're saying that basically he believes in what he's doing. Therefore, it's not just an ego boosting thing. Whereas the uh, Professor Anton, to be serious, is representing academia. Uh, quoting bits out of various books and people like Socrates and Aristotle to actually be an ego boosting thing, not a genuine um, ex exploration, explanation, it's a word like that. Talking out of academia is not academia the way it's often put out is more ego boosting as opposed to really trying to get real work done exposition i think the word was i don't know if you uh Actually, I haven't even put the video up, so I don't, I don't know if I would. Um, why Gary, and to a degree myself, might be more acceptable to you where the academics are not is probably the ego thing, but it's very understandable because Gary and I are amateurs, so we don't have to um, pretend to be academics. We don't have to quote all these book ways of saying things. We can just say it as we see it. A, in an amateur way, and in a way not that's just amateur, but in a way that is more felt because that is the reasoning that we're doing it, as opposed to the academics who are, to a greater extent, prove, trying to prove something to their peers, their other academics, and presumably to themselves as well, um, that their academic book learning has been worthwhile. Um, I personally probably think it isn't, unless their geniuses and I am I, I know I'm not a genius, but that I'm a long way behind. I've read, can't say I've read all these books, 95% of these books and lots and lots of others. I can't remember a word of them. And I don't think academics can either, unless they make special effort to remember bits out of books. And I think that's what you get from academics is their pride of being able to regurgitate bits out of books which doesn't actually make for a coherent picture of anything what you get from say gary yourself or myself would be what we feel so we can flow it out because it just flows out easier because it just is it, it, it is how we feel it as opposed to we're not trying to create an image or a picture of ourselves or, or we're, we're trying to do we're not obviously we do that in, in, in all life humans just do that when they communicate but when it's to a, a greater a, a lesser degree the academics are always having in their mind that they must prove their academic academic superiority and we don't have that pressure basically it's easier for us to talk shit which m might come across as more honest. And in a way, that might lead to the impression that we are more uh, clinical or ruthless in our scientific endeavor. But I don't know that that actually does follow. Uh, here, I think you're making a mistake. Um, I think what you've just said is that Gary is doing the right thing by robust, def no, robust attack 
of pseudo academic science. But I think then the next move was um, an oblique a attack to say, but then Gary bases a lot of what he says on pseudo academic science. Now I think this is obviously to everything's to an extent right, but if I, what I'll do, I'll kind of link Gary, Gary and I so I can talk for myself and I think I'm talking for Gary at the same time. Let's say on my opening few hundred videos on free will, I would talk in my amateur way, as you rightly point out, about free will from what I call a logical point of view. Uh, pure, not pure logic, because that's probably something in the books, but just logic, uh, logical, man-to-man -man sort of, well, what do you reckon, that's that, this is that, well, how could that possibly be that sort of logic? And only in extremis would I say, well, look, when it does come down, because people would say this, that, and that, that, and I'd say, well, when it comes down to it, science actually hasn't found any free will, and they've really been looking for it an awful lot. And I think to a greater extent, Gary does this as well. He pushes out the basic, as I've described for me, the basic logic of the position, and then we'll try and back it up with whatever pseudoscience he knows, or whatever science he knows. Like I would then say, well, because I'm just about up to date with neurobiology, but, you know, you, I can't be because I do economics and the, play in the garden. I'm not a neuroscientist. So I do my best at that. But I think that, certainly for me anyway, that comes second um, to back something up with a scientific or what I know about scientific argument. And I think Gary understands that his is backed up by what his is, is a scientific way but first line is always just the logic of the situation. Pragmatic, cap pragmatic capitalism. That's one of my favourite econ blog sites. Pragmatic. Funny how that's the brain at work, isn't it? Pragmatic capitalism, as I say, is one of my favourite econ websites. So when I go to repeat what you said, which was pragmatic pessimism, real struggle, real struggle. Pragmatic pessimism, you say, is the... Let's get this right, because this is vaguely important. I'm going to run out of space on this. I might have to put a new card in on the camera. I'm enjoying this, by the way. Pragmatic pessimism, I've got the right place. Is. Is reasonable, you say. Is reasonable. Is reasonable. So, let, for nothing else, if for nothing else, let's say we're discussing the, the fancy video, and that shines out of there, because... I think it's when the deer or whatever it is, water buck, is having a drink that Gary says pessimism is the rational or logical overall way of looking at things. Life. Pes pessimism is reasonable. But you don't necessarily agree that Gary's pessimism is reasonable. So now I'll come back when I've listened to your... Because this is quite crucial, of course. Interesting. I'll just run it through and get the words right. The talking about antinatalism ultimately will volunteer itself into a place of self-extinction. is pragmatically you don't necessarily think it is awful but then you say that's not pragmatic so this is going to be interesting because you've kind of set it up to hit the interesting side of it and you haven't you've hit the boring side of it you hit the side that says it would have been interesting if you'd hit you you know we're on pragmatic pessimism so, and you're going to attack it to a certain extent, but you're not going to attack the pessimism, you're going to attack the pragmatic, which I think is the boring half of the, the two words. Now, this is, um, this, this is 
this this is wrong. What you're saying here is while it's right that we should acknowledge what I call spam, <laughs> if you if anybody wants to adopt spam, they can. Suffering, pain, anguish and misery. Uh, spam, all right? While it is um, right that we acknowledge the spam, in... and all the unpleasantness, that this evolving life, it's not evolving. It's changing but evolving implication. The implication there is, oh, I've got less than a minute. The implication is it's going somewhere. The bottom left, top right, it's going somewhere, but it isn't. So I'd say a premise was wrong there. That's deep psychology, isn't it? Is it, or is, anyway, I've only just learned this. No, if, if, if we were going somewhere, yes. But I don't think we're going anywhere. And I doubt if in the last uh, four minutes you're going to explain where we are going. I'm going to have to change the card and position. Just to get back in the way of the game, in new card, new position, we were um, bottom left, top writing. Are we going anywhere? Whatever you say from here on in or around here now about anything to me is futile unless you can explain to me this going place somewhere. You had a little stab with um, living for 500 years or going to Mars. I wasn't impressed. If you'd like to have another go top banana but at the time of going to press whatever you're saying about um, evolving and the implication that we've it, there's something else to balance out what you've described in your way as the spam I'm not impressed now you've hit up with something that is really not worthy You've hit us up with, we really don't know where this process is taking us. Now, please admit that that really isn't good enough. Um, pleading ignorance, therefore giving spam the benefit of the doubt, and I'm only talking about spam because you are, repeat, pleading ignorance and thereby giving spam the benefit of the doubt is not good enough. Oh, I suppose I should get this right. Okay. Pain and suffering. It's all fine and well and you can understand spam. But I don't adopt that. You're talking to me, not Gary, but just imagine what Gary would be saying. You know, should I play the Gary person? Because I, I don't do the spam thing. That isn't the angle I come from. But um, we can all um, think of nice things to think about and nice things to do and nice ways to get through this life and how to fill life up photographing hummingbird hawk moths on lavender we can all do it but that is not enough just make do and mend making the best of something stoic you used before i think that's a better use of stoic being stoic is no balancing justification for spam is it Quote coming in, but there may be something in the future which surpasses the pain and suffering. Again, please admit that this is 
piss weak. Hey, it's, it's, it's nothing more than hope. Isn't it really? It is really nothing more than hope. Uh, should I let you go on while I'm... No, I'll turn it off. And we, we are a tenu tenuous link in the chain to that place. This place in the future that we're hoping for will um, arise. And we not, might not actually reap any of the benefit of that, of that ultimate assimilation of knowledge and the ability to harness vast energies. to shape ecologies and whatever. Right, so now uh, we can have, we'll, we'll just go to my people loving each other in their geodesic domes and there's ultimate power. They could do anything or everything they want because there's no end to the power that they have, as in not they, they physically, but a power source has been found that feeds Plenty of power that they can use. There's no, there's no trouble with luxury. There's no trouble with uh, farming. Obviously, there's no trouble with anything. Science has evolved, so pain is really minimised, and life goes on for long, long time. And there are occasional trips out to the planet Zog and back. So, uh, uh, speaking personally, I am not in the slightest bit impressed. Not at all. I would not want to be there. It's, it's, it's not my idea of paradise. And even if it was, that, all of that, is still totally and utterly futile. Hey, right? Isn't it? All these people in their, doesn't have to be domes, they can be in the, the, the green pastures, and clean running water and lambs laying down with lions and everybody is wonderfully loving each other and it's really fabulous. So what? To me that's the bottom line. That doesn't add up to a hill of beans. It is, again, I'm going to fall into this. It's a complete waste of time. It's just still utterly, completely useless. Whether there is spam there or there is no spam there, it is still useless, futile, inutile. <laughs> and uh, you're kind of round, rounding up with, you think it would be kind of selfish to stop the in, 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 in experiment. You didn't say it, but the implication is there just in case we get to this hoped for paradise but i'll say okay have all that hope for paradise but just have a little think about whether then that paradise when it arrives is anything at all anything at all hope's wonderful hope makes us our own personal lives a lot better it's what humans do. Hope is brilliant. Hope is fantastic. Hope is the best thing a human can have, is hope. It does get us through this life. But it don't add up to anything at all. Just having hope, I totally agree, is a panacea. It's not a panacea. It's, 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 it is the, the thing to give people as the pap to get them through this life that has, uh, in an antinatalist way, been forced upon them. Give them hope because they love this travelling somewhere, going somewhere idea. It really gives people, that the, the brain, the whole obviously Darwinian human brain has been set up for these telescoped things where I'm really getting somewhere, I'm going somewhere. Short term goals, medium term goals, really long term goals. The human brain loves it, so it can go <laughs> loves it. So yes, though if if the idea is to give people hope to get them through 
this life that's been forced on them as nicely as possible. It's terrific. But it ain't philosophy, is it? Funny face, funny face. Is it? <laughs> Next you say, it's, don't you think it's incredibly unscientific? You, you, you seem to understand that. I just don't understand what you're talking about there. Um, I, I've no idea. I don't really know what scientific is. So uh, whether it's scientific or unscientific, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Let me have a stab at psychoanalyst uh, analytics, seeing you've had a stab. You've just likened yourself to myself and Gary as a group together of the semi-amateurs fighting a rearguard battle against the pseudo-academics. I just like to point out that that's just very natural human behaviour of grouping together to make a group to fight another group. And I'll just throw in, just to be naughty, that I'm sure that that's what they will be doing in their geodesic domes as well, if they're still human beings. And we get the, the end with unintelligent design, but who knows? Perhaps humanity, or a form of humanity, in the future, may, may, be able to intelligently design. So, <laughs> it's what they're doing, uh, I'll just link it to the economics, it's what they're doing with the bank's balance sheets. It's just hoping. It's just hoping things turn out all right. Um, it's, it is the best thing to do if we want happy, smiling people. You're a happy, smiling person here, right at the end of the video. Um, it is best to, to, if you want happy, smiling people, to fill them full of hope. But that is not... It doesn't, it doesn't gel with any sort of uh, grounded logic that runs around in here or any what I might call philosophy that runs around in here. It doesn't, it doesn't add up to hilly beans. All it adds up to is developing, what did I call them, um, efficient coping mechanisms for this life that we find ourselves with. Yep, it's top banana for that, hope is. But when it comes as anywhere close to a philosophical um, conversation, I think I would whiz over to the academic side, take the superior high ground and say, no, out with your hope, this is a philosophy class. Okay, so we've got to the end. I don't know how long that took, but um, I did enjoy it. And as I say, um, uh, I've, I've felt that I had owed you a video for a long time, so I'm glad I've done it. Wise Monkey, Fred, Frank, Bill, whoever you are, thanks. Bye.